This is going to sound like a repeat. Denver is being sued over excessive police force. We got our hands on this July 2014 video from a West Denver park. Take a look at it. It shows one of two deadly Denver police shootings that day. As Denver 7's Martians, Marshall Zellinger shows us, a new lawsuit contends Denver police are trained to shoot too soon. Let's get this fact out there right away. Joseph Valverde, the man who's about to be shot and killed by SWAT, had a gun on him. You can see here he pulls out something black and drops it right in front of the car, puts his hands up, and that's when he gets shot. Raymond Bryant represents Valverde's mother in a lawsuit against Denver. We have this footage because Valverde was being watched by surveillance on July 2nd, 2014, as part of a Metro Gang Task Force operation. Police say he had $53,000 in a backpack to buy cocaine, but his dealer was an undercover officer who called in backup. You see a flashbang. The SWAT officers surround him, and that's when Valverde reaches for his waist. His manifest intent was to give himself up in this case. The officer didn't wait long enough to see that. Why shouldn't I think, yeah, the police did the right thing. He took a gun out. Because the gun wasn't used in a threatening manner. It's that simple. Denver police officers are allowed to use deadly force to defend themselves or others from what they reasonably believe to be the imminent use of deadly physical force. You don't see somebody raise a weapon or pointed at anybody. The officer who shoots and kills Valverde is across the vehicle, Sergeant Justin Dodge. He told investigators he saw Valverde reach down a few times. On the third or fourth pole, he saw a gun. As soon as I saw his wrist break and I saw that muzzle, because it looked like it was coming up to me, and that's when I shot him. Okay, and when you start shooting, why did you shoot? I shot because I saw the barrel, and I thought he was going to shoot me. When the officer says, I fired on him when I saw the muzzle of the gun, and you compare that to the video where Mr. Valverde put the gun out to his side and dropped it, I think you can see that this officer must have known he did something wrong. After the shooting, another officer told investigators Dodge was supposed to have had the less lethal 40 millimeter, a rubber bullet gun. Dodge said, I intentionally grabbed my rifle because I thought it's a possibility being armed. He wasn't trying to run. He wasn't trying to get away from me at this point. That's why I grabbed my rifle instead of the 40 millimeter. Interviews with other officers reveal slightly different variations of what happened before the shooting. One said he heard someone shout gun. Another heard, show us your hands and get on the ground. Well, we have audio of the incident because a filmmaker shooting a documentary nearby captured the sounds. I, I think it all went so fast. I don't believe that he got a chance, a fair chance. Sarah, who does not want to be identified out of concern for police retaliation, is the woman walking a dog right behind Valverde when the flashbang goes off. I did hear them say how they had to take him out. What happened here in Overland Park is just one part of the lawsuit. Hours after this shooting, Ryan Ronquillo was shot and killed in the parking lot of a funeral home. Surveillance shows his car boxed in. He backs the car over the sidewalk, grazing one Denver officer and nearly hitting another. Ronquillo, who was wanted for domestic violence and car theft, was shot and killed. And in January 2015, another deadly shooting. Jessica Hernandez was spotted in a stolen car in a North Denver alley. One officer said Hernandez drove at him at a high rate of speed, and that's when she was shot and killed. DPD changed policy to no longer shoot at a moving vehicle unless officers are being shot at. This lawsuit over Valverde's shooting seeks to change policy some more. The Denver police officers here, just like in the Ronquillo case and the Jessica Hernandez case, don't seem to understand what imminence is in an imminent threat. The Denver DA found all those shootings justified, but in the Valverde case, both he and the city's independent monitor had issues with the time and place of the shooting because of Sarah and other park visitors. We want to know where you stand on this. Is this excessive force or a frivolous lawsuit? We've posted a video on both the Denver 7 Facebook page and on mine. Let us know.